Hi guys and welcome to the channel, my name is Nick O'Leary. Now today I thought it might be quite a good idea to go through how you can customise your instrument cluster. Now of course, do just bear in mind due to the many variations of Mercedes-Benz models and of course different specification, some of the things that I'll show you here today are for specific models, but I'll try and keep it as generalised as possible. So let's have a look. So your instrument cluster found in your Mercedes-Benz is the screen directly behind the steering wheel, the one with your speed. And in quite a few new modern Mercedes-Benz, they feature these touchpads on the steering wheel that directly control each screen. So on this example here, we've got the left-hand side will control the left screen, and then the right-hand side here closest to me will control the right screen. Now, on the previous styled steering wheel in Mercedes-Benz, they didn't actually have touch pads on the steering wheel. So the way this works is they had dedicated buttons and you press the up down buttons to cycle through the menus, uh, anything from trip to radio, navi, media, telephone functions. So there is some sort of customization still there. And uh, when you're on that relevant screen, it will stay there unless you press the home button and then go straight back to the trip one, the one with your speed. Now, of course, as in-car technology has advanced over the years, there's lots of customization you can do on these screens. So if I click the home button in, we can then swipe this left and right and literally customize what you see on this screen here. And then when you click it in, you'll see the relevant thing on the screen. Now, of course, you'll always have your speed at the bottom so you know what speed you're doing, but it's a way of customizing the screen to kind of make it your own. So let's have a look and see what each thing does. But in this example now, we'll focus on one of the larger screens. So on the larger screens, and in this case, the 10.25 inch screens, uh, you can see you've got two dials. So unlike the one that we just saw that was a seven inch screen, these are 10.25 inch screens. So the main difference here being that the seven inch screens just show one dial. You can still customize this. As you saw, you can put the map in the middle or uh, trip information, miles an hour, MPG, that sort of thing. But when you have the wider screen, like the 10.25 inch screen, of course, you've got a little bit more flexibility and customization. So if you've just taken delivery of your Mercedes-Benz, you'll probably have this set up here. So you've got the miles an hour on the left-hand side, a digital miles an hour in the middle, and then the revs, or in this case, this being an electric car, the power that you're using. So to customize this, of course, uh, I'll use the touchpads on the right-hand side of the steering wheel because that controls the right screen. I'm gonna click the home button here and you can see there's a menu come up on the screen. You basically just swipe this left and right to view different things, anything from assistance, telephone, navigation, trip, radio, media, styles and displays, and service. So let's have a look and see what all these different things do. So starting on the assistant screen, if I click this in, this is what it will look like. Now, this specific screen is mainly for the driving assistance package, which I'll be honest is quite a rare thing in the UK. Basically, it'll show you what information the car's eyes can see in front. So uh, if you're following the car in front, you'll see a little picture of the car here and you can adjust the speed depending on the car in front. So this is like the radar cruise control. Now, if you don't have the driving assistance package, then I wouldn't worry about the screen too much. It shows a little bit of information, but not really any useful information. So I wouldn't worry about this one too much. However, the screen does show you a couple of extra things. So if you swipe down, you'll see that you have a thing called attention assist. And attention assist basically is standard on virtually all Mercedes-Benz models, and it monitors how you drive. And if you start to get uh, uh, tired or develop any sort of drowsiness the car can actually notify you but this is actually where you can see how well you're doing so obviously i'm not driving at the moment so it'll just say system suspended um, and don't worry if you're driving around and it does say that this is only uh, in operation when you're on dual carriageways and motorways at a certain speed so it won't work around town or anything uh, if i swipe down again this bit here you'll see it says full screen display and what this means is basically if you click the button in it will make this kind of assistance menu full screen. So again, if you have that driving assistance package, you'll see even more information here uh, to do with lane keeping assist, uh, the car in front with active distance assist, Astronic. But as I said, if you don't have the driving assistance package, don't worry too much. Uh, the next one along is telephone. Now I don't have a phone linked up here at the moment, but basically when you have got your phone linked, you'll be able to view your contacts on here. You can swipe up and down and select 
uh, people in your phone book or recently uh, called people and called them literally without even changing the screen over here. So a really good example, say you've got the sat nav on the left hand side here and you don't want to lose what you've got on the screen here, you can do it all from this screen. So another nice little neat feature there. If I press the home button again and then go to the next one, which is navigation, this is where you'll see some information on the next turn that you're going to do on the sat nav. So in this case here, I haven't got anything programmed in on the sat nav, but it's going to show you my direction of travel. So let's pop something in on the sat nav. So let's just put in the postcode right here. Europe is being calculated. And as you can see here, it will show you directions on the screen basically which turn to take on the road. Now, one little neat thing is on selected models, you can actually swipe this down to go through some extra things and you can kind of move the map over here. Now, obviously just bear in mind, this is for the inbuilt sat nav. So if you're using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto or something like that, that is limited to the, just the center displays. So you can't move that over to the uh, instrument cluster, but it's a nice little feature anyway. Now on some also selected models, if you swipe down, you'll see full screen display. And this is how you can view a full screen for the map. That's not available on all models, but it's still a pretty nice feature. Obviously, you probably wouldn't have a dual sat nav going here. Maybe you'll have um, your telephone over here or maybe music playing off of your phone or something. And then you've got um, your sat nav in full screen directly in front of you. And of course, with your miles an hour at the very, very top. So a nice little neat feature. Uh, pressing the home button once more and then going to the next one across is the trip menu. So this trip menu shows you um, all the statistical information. So things like how many miles the car's done, when you last reset it, uh, your miles an hour and MPG and that sort of thing. And to get through these, just like the other menus, you swipe up and down on the touchpad uh, just here. And uh, you can see this car is obviously brand new. It's done four miles to be exact. Uh, swipe down, you've got the digital speed in the middle and swipe down again. This one shows you the um, current consumption. So in this case, it's actually miles per kilowatt hour, but if it's a petrol or diesel, it'll be MPG miles per gallon. Uh, swiping down once more shows you the eco display. So I won't go into detail about this. I have made a specific video on eco display. So click on the pop-up banner if you wanted to know more about that one, basically in referencing MPG miles per gallon, how much fuel or energy you're using. After this, we have the from start and from reset. So basically the from start is uh, your journey for the day. It resets basically after around about six hours from memory. So uh, say you went on a road trip, this is gonna show you all of your statistical information. So anything from your miles, uh, the time you've been driving, average MPG or average miles per kilowatt and your average speed. The one after this, the from reset, is from when it was last reset. So quite commonly, it's actually when you picked up your Mercedes, unless you've reset it, of course. The from start is for your journey that you've just done, and the from reset is from when you last reset it. And then the final thing on this one is, again, a full screen. So you can kind of view a lot of this information in full screen here like this. Again, not available on all models, but um, a nice little touch in case you have the dual widescreen displays like this one. After this one, we have radio. So pressing the home button and then going right again, clicking that in will show you the current radio station that's playing. Obviously I've got it muted at the moment, but you can swipe this up and down to view different radio stations. And again, you could have the sat nav on over here, navigating you around and you don't have to take your eyes off the sat nav. Again, it's just kind of user preference, which way round you want it to be, where you want the screens to show. So lots of customization here. Going to the next one is media. So media is how you can play music off of your phone. Now, of course you can do that on the left screen, but say you wanted to see the track information or the podcast or the audio book or something that's playing on your phone. This is how you do it in here. And you can actually swipe up and down then to control the track. But of course, whatever you put on the screen here, you'll always have your speed uh, nice and clear at the top showing you what speed you're currently doing. Uh, pressing the home button once more and then going to the right is how you change the styles and displays. So if I cycle through these here, go to sport for example, you can change the theme of what your dials look like. And uh, yeah, there's a few to choose from. Uh, you won't have all of these, again it does vary from model to model, but in this particular one there's classic, uh, sport and progressive. And then if you're lucky enough to have an AMG then you may even have one called super sport as well. 
Understated is just a very simple one. It kind of dims the displays right down. As you can see here, even turns off the left screen as well. But if you press anything on the screens, it will go back to the way it was before. And then after styles and displays, there's a thing called service. So going in here is kind of how you view any messages. So for example, say your windscreen washes low, or maybe there's uh, low pressure in one of your tires, or it's due a service, or basically something's not quite right. Uh, this is where you can view those messages that you may have dismissed. So going down one, this is the tire section here. So this is how you can view each individual tire pressure on your wheels. And if you swipe down, this is how you can reset it. So if I click this in, this will reset that tire pressure monitor. Um, so the only time you'd need to do this is of course you've pumped up the tires and you want to clear the message that's on the screen because cars are quite clever. They do notify you if you've got any uh, uh, low tires now and this is how you reset it. Now pressing the home button once more and going to that service menu there is an assist plus thing here and basically this shows you when the car is due for a service. Now of course this being brand new at the moment it's not been out on the road um, it's not going to be due for a service until someone purchases it. But this will show you, of course, when the car is due for a service. So quite handy. Now, of course, these being uh, digital instrument clusters, you don't have to stick to just changing the middle part. I know most people do prefer the screens to look a bit like this with your miles an hour on the left and uh, actually your digital speed in the middle and then revs or EQ power on the right here but you can actually customize each of these elements now again this is a, a thing that does vary from model to model on uh, owners of command NTG 5.5 if you have this widescreen display you can swipe this right and see the kind of cursor move to the right here you can customize this dial and swipe up and down and view different things now if you're lucky enough to have MBUX uh, you can then also swipe this to the left. Again, does vary from model to model, but you can then change this one. So just to show you, you could put things like maybe your trip information here, how many miles you have left in, in the range or the fuel tank. Um, maybe you want to have your music playing here. And then, I don't know, maybe you want to put the sat-nav in the middle. And then over here on the right-hand side, say you wanted to maybe put... Uh, let's have a look. We could put your current consumption. So there's so much customization you can do here. Uh, you could even put things like maybe the sat nav over here on the right, and then in the middle, uh, put music playing, and then on the left hand side, put your current speed. So you customize it how you'd like it to be. And the best thing about this, if you have MBUX, this will save it on your profile. Now, if you don't know what profiles are, I have covered that in another video, so I'll put a link up above if you want to check that out. Basically on MBUX, uh, you can have up to seven people and their profiles. So a bit like a Windows PC or a Mac, you each have your own login. In here you have your own profile and it saves all of this. So say I wanted it saved like that, as long as you've done that on your profile, it will save it for your profile. So next time someone else gets in, someone might prefer the display shown in a more classic way or maybe you want a different theme and you want the displays like this it's quite clever how you can customize all of this stuff and just make the car your own really and there we go guys that concludes this week's video on how to customize your instrument cluster in your mercedes-benz don't forget if you liked what you saw do hit the like button down below and do hit the subscribe button if you want to see more future videos just like this one thanks again for watching see you next week